Hi, I'm Elisa Wood, Editor-in-Chief of Microgrid Knowledge, and I'm here today with Zach Bradford, who is the CEO of CleanSpark. Hi, Zach, and welcome to Microgrid 2020 Global. Hey, thank you. It's great to be here. Well, we're really happy you're here, and I'm so happy that you can take some time to talk to us and um, answer some questions about CleanSpark and the way the um, microgrid market is looking these days. So 2020 was a pretty tough year for everybody <laughs> with the pandemic and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, um, what have been the biggest drivers and, and the biggest challenges that you faced at CleanSpark this year? You know, I, I think that the challenges and dr uh, drivers for 2020 have been a little bit one and the same in, in the sense that the world that we're in is, is challenging. Um, obviously, we've had a pandemic that uh, nobody could have predicted. Um, and then you add on top of it, you know, wildfires that we've seen in California, you know, there's there's been some hurricanes, things like that. It's It's been a tough year for a lot of people. And, and that's, that's created a lot of challenges. Um, you know, specifically those challenges for the microgrid industry in itself is, you know, there are a lot of commercial industrial companies whose um, energy use profiles change completely. Um, they went from having very busy offices or facilities to having empty offices and facilities. And so I think the challenge that's created is, um, you know, there's a lot of decisions that got delayed. There's a lot of people that are very eager to put a microgrid into place and, and they put the pause button on it until their workforce gets back into normal. Um, at the same time, that level of uncertainty has created a lot of awareness around the energy market and knowing that flexibility um, is needed so that as you do have ebbs and flows. Um, you know, an interesting place that we've seen growth is, is not just in the commercial and industrial space, but you know, the residential market has developed in a new way with all the people working, working from home. So um, very challenging. And I think it all comes back to you know, those key facts. Um, you know, if I was to take to, to the next level, I'd say, Cost reductions have been a, a great um, thing we've seen from equipment and vendors, you know, the hardware pieces. As costs come down, it's, uh, and they have been year over year for the past several years, especially in the energy storage space. Um, that's a bit been a big driver. There's projects penciling today that didn't pencil 18 months ago. So how is CleanSpark addressing these challenges and these drivers? What's changed for you? You know, what, what we've done is, is we've, we've mined a lot more data to find the opportunities. Um, we've expanded our sales force because it does take more work to get projects through. Um, and, you know, for us, it's actually been a great year. We, we, we actually doubled in size in the last 12 months. So even with everything there, I see it as proof um, that the microgrid market is here to stay and it's going to be growing. Um, and, and really at the core of what we try and do is, um, be flexible and intelligent, which is what our products are based on, is, is forecasting and intelligence in the controls of a microgrid. Um, again, because of the uncertainty that's come up, more and more people are realizing that if you don't have intelligence built in your system, um, it'll cause problems in one way, shape, or form, or you'll reduce your return on investment. So, so for us, we're really trying to drive the return on investment for, for people that, that are deploying microgrids. So that leads to my next question. I'm curious, you're talking about the controller, which is, I think, sort of the, the heart and soul of innovation in a microgrid. What kind of innovations are you seeing these days in microgrids? Yeah, so um, what we're seeing is, is uh, you know, from a, from a hardware side, we're seeing more assets, a variety of assets being put into play. Um, I'm actually really excited about the level of, um, level of thought that's going into things, you know, we, we, for us, it's very common to do a solar and storage microgrid. More and more, we're starting to see, you know, uh, again, it has a lot to do with cost. You know, fuel cell costs are going down. Um, you know, certain types of, of generators are becoming more feasible based on fuel source or whatever it may be. So microgrids are getting more complicated. Um, at the same time, that's exciting for us because we're, our software tries to make the complicated easy. Um, the controller that we have doesn't involve a man in the loop. And I think that's more and more important in the whole thing. So we're I'm also sorry, extremely again, excited. A... No, I'm, sorry, what... I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I didn't quite catch that. You said your controller doesn't involve a... Oh, a man in the loop. What does that mean? Um, so th there's, there's no human that needs to pull levers. The software takes care of everything. 
um, are forecasting, you know, it looks ahead and says, hey, is it going to be cloudy tomorrow? If so, let's store more power today to use tomorrow. Nobody needs to be aware to think about things. Your system will always self-optimize. And, and that's, that's what's exciting about what, what we're doing is really looking ahead, forecasting, and, and trying to, again, it's all about driving ROI. There, there's real money being put into these systems and getting the economics to work out is better for the entire ecosystem of the microgrid market. Absolutely, absolutely. So what's in store for 2021? How are you looking ahead at that at the market for next year? You know, I, I think the floodgates will open. Um, you know, I actually had thought that maybe 2020 was gonna be that year. And I think we were heading that way when the pandemic happened. And I think that there is a, just a massive amount of pent up demand um, where, you know, people delayed decisions or, you know, for, for us, we have a lot of proposals that are outstanding that people are gonna be ready to move forward on once they have certainty about the future. So for me, I think you're gonna see new customers coming in because microgrids are becoming a, a more common phrase. Um, people, you know, energy costs are going up. Um, none, of, none of the normal things are gonna change, but I think you're also gonna see an added influx of individuals who were gonna make a decision in 2020 you know, finalize that decision and move forward in 2021. So I, I think the microgrid market as a whole, um, we're all going to be very busy in, in 2021. We're hearing that a lot. That's, that's very encouraging. Yes. So we've also seen a big change recently in the president and the administration. I'm curious if you think that will affect the microgrid market in any way. You know, I, I think it, it'll help it positively. Um, you know, um, a lot of microgrids um, kind of at their core um, pull in renewables. And, you know, often those renewables may be paired with some other baseload generator or something like that. But, you know, as there are further um, incentives for renewables, whether it be, you know, um, you know, battery incentives, tax incentives, I, I think that the current, uh, you know, newly elected president um, is going to drive some of those forward where, you know, they've been there, but, you know, things, things have been a little stagnant and I think we're going to get a jump start in the market. So I'm actually uh, very enthusiastic about it. Obviously, politics, you know, it's anybody's guess. Um, but but I, I actually think that we're in for, for a good four years in, in our industry in particular. It's great to hear. It's encouraging. So we have several thousand people here at the conference from all around the world. Is there anything else you'd like to convey to our audience today? You know, for for me, the, the, the big thing is, is that as an industry, we need to be future proofed. Um, and what I mean by that is the utilities. Um, we want to work with them, but, you know, we also want to align incentives for whoever the business owner is. And, and utilities by design in, in most states, they, they can change their rates and tariffs as, as often as every three years. And that means these systems need to be nimble so that if things change in three years, that the return on investment to the owners of these systems is, is still there. And, and so future proofing is, is what we're thinking in the, 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 the phrase we're using around the office. Um, to make sure that we're ready and able to, to move in any direction that the market goes. And, and again, that's, that's kind of at the root of, of how we think at CleanSpark is, is future-proofing systems through uh, technology and software. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Zach. Uh, really appreciate hearing about hearing your views and hearing about CleanSpark.